those of you that are, how many of you have been in the council chamber before for uh, uh, decision making? Did you? All right. So uh, a few uh, protocols for the room. Uh, unless you're in middle school um, and making a presentation, if you like something, you do this. If you don't like something, you do this. Uh, there's actually no clapping, no hooting, no hissing, no large noises. Um, because this is a chamber where we like uh, to actually facilitate the free flow of ideas. Uh, the other uh, protocol is if you um, are a registered lobbyist, uh, if, if you've been authorized to speak on behalf of a business or an organization, uh, you just need to say that at the beginning of your testimony. Um, we only want your name, we don't want your address, we don't want your phone number, uh, all we need, all we want uh, is your name. Um, we have a sign-up sheet, uh, if you want to sign up. How many people have signed up? 16, so far. 16, so uh, we've got a, we're going to limit uh, uh, comments to a minute. If you prepared longer and you've got something new and different to say that hasn't already been said, then um, it might let you go a little longer, but um, uh, since we're pressed for time this morning, we'll, we'll limit it to a minute. Uh, could you please, what I'd like is for uh, Ms. Frazzini and Mr. Benson uh, will be our first speakers. If you want to go ahead and come on up after we read the title, Yvonne Decker and Kathy are here to answer questions after we get the testimony done. Yeah. Item 551, authorized health and welfare contracts with Cascade Center Inc. and Kroger Prescription Plans Inc. administered by the Bureau of Human Resources Benefits and Wellness Office, effective July 1, 2011, through June 30, 2016, and amend the City of Portland Health Plan and the City of Portland Cafeteria Plan to reflect necessary plan administrative and design changes as recommended by the Labor Management Benefits Committee and requested by DHR for the City Self-Insured Plans beginning July 1, 2011. So uh, a few introductory comments before I hear from our, our invited speakers and then move to public testimony. Uh, we here in the city want to attract the best applicants and retain the best employees. Uh, the American Medical Association in 2008 said that uh, transgender benefits were medically necessary. We rely on doctors to tell us what is basic medically necessary treatment in terms of determining uh, what is in our health plan. In the city of Portland, uh, the health plan uh, is uh, the advice on what the city council should do with our health plan. Um, we rely on the Labor Management Benefits Committee. It is very rare for the city council to do something different than is recommended by the Labor Management Benefits Committee. It has happened before, but it is rare. This is one of those rare times where we are respectfully disagreeing with uh, their advice in this matter. We're doing that because uh, we do think that this is basically uh, basic medically necessary uh, services uh, that should be included in our health care benefits. The city of San Francisco uh, included these benefits in their uh, insurance offerings for their employees and they have found the impacts to be de minimis, which means there hasn't been a big impact on the overall cost of the San Francisco, city and county San Francisco medical benefits. We being extra, extra prudent, have put aside $32,000 in the event that we will have additional costs. Uh, our health care is paid for both by a contribution from employees and also uh, from taxpayers. So we've been, that's $32,000 for the entire year for everything. Um, the other reason why uh, we're moving this forward is the city council was one of the first cities in Oregon uh, to pass the civil rights ordinance. And it eventually came to include the phrase that we would not discriminate, nor would we allow others to discriminate based on a number of factors, including gender identity. There was, however, fine print. Fine print was what we are going to address today in terms of removing the exclusion and including uh, transgender, medically necessary transgender um, services. It's about basic 
In addition to attracting the best and brightest, this is about basic fairness and about also uh, having city council and the city of Portland be an exemplar in uh, asking others and joining with others because we're not the first in the public or private sector to offer these benefits, but to be an exemplar uh, with others uh, that this is about basic fairness. And we seek to be uh, the place of the most equal of opportunities. With that brief introduction, I'd like to turn it over to our partner, uh, who's worked with us over the years to get basic fairness, not only in city policies, but in local laws and state laws, the Executive Director of Basic Rights Oregon. Uh, thank you. Any questions for Kathy or Ron? All right, would you please call the vote? Yes. I want to begin by thanking Mayor Adams for bringing uh, this ordinance forward and our friends at Basic Rights Oregon for making a very compelling case for healthcare equity. Uh, I want to clear up a couple of facts which people may be confused about. The first is the Labor Management Benefit Committee, my understanding is voted seven to five to support this benefit. But they have a rule that requires a supermajority. So in fact, there was a majority support, but not the supermajority. And I think that's important that that be in the public record. I also did some quick math during the testimony, and I took the $41 million which we spend on our city core plan, and I divided it by the $32,000 of benefit that we'd be adding. Yvonne, maybe I got this wrong, but it comes out in my math to 0.001% increase. Is that about right? One tenth of one percent. But I think that underscores what the number of people testify that the cost here really is trivial compared to them. So I'm pleased to support this ordinance. The American Medical Association, to me, for me, has resolved the question by deeming this a medically necessary procedure. Uh, based on the briefings I've received, I've also concluded that surgery is not optional. It is actually an appropriate treatment. It seems to me that Multnomah County, San Francisco, Nike, Wells Fargo, Kraft Food have all settled that the question of whether this is <laughs> whether this is a mainstream benefit or not. It is also worth noting that we currently cover mental health services and hormone therapy. So what we're really doing is extending the benefit to include uh, the surgical piece. Thirty-two thousand dollars seems like a drop in the bucket to achieve inclusive health care. This city does not discriminate. We do not make judgments about people's status. I believe today is a leadership moment. I believe the mayor is leading us effectively on this issue. And I am proud as a member of this community to vote on it. Well, I believe, uh, I think if I were to sum up what my public career is all about, it would be trying to make people happy. And not just voters when it comes to the election, but to really make every person in the city lead a happy and productive life. I think you can't ask for more, and you can't aspire to any higher goal as, as a public servant. And I think that we, uh, whether it's you know, my career has been hallmarked by working with children who are abused and neglected, victims of domestic violence services, helping children in foster care to lead successful lives. And I think this will be one of my other proud legacies, and that is helping people to live the gender that they are in all aspects and manifestations. I think this is a small price to pay for fundamental uh, helping people to lead happy lives. We heard several testimonies on suicidal considerations. And I think it's time to end that and to provide the means necessary for people to become the gender they truly believe they are. So I too am proud to vote. Well, I just had an aha moment. Uh, I've served with Dan on the city council now for five, uh, for nine years, and have often tried to understand why he and I ever disagree because we philosophically come from exactly the same place. And, I, and, it, and it is because he tries to make everybody happy, and I know I'm not going to make everybody happy <laughs> when I get up in the morning. So I'm, I'm uh, going to go to bed more comfortable than I am, <laughs> having resolved that conflict. And I would point out to Commissioner Fish that if his math is correct, 0.001% is not one-tenth of 1%, but one-hundredth of 
Yvonne. Correction, I, I was looking for Yvonne for guidance, but uh, the lawyer does that. Yvonne was just being nice. The, um, as Dan has heard me say more than anybody here, because he and I have served together my entire uh, length of service on the council, what, what I really appreciate about serving on this body is not is not what I think the public uh, often reads and views, but it's you know, the public disagreements that we may uh, have from time to time uh, are often more, whether it was Vera as mayor, or Tom Potter as mayor, or Sam as mayor, are oftentimes more disagreements of style than they are substance, and this is another example of that. Um, I served in the Oregon legislature for um, over nine years, and it was not that way. Um, we would have discussions like this where people truly said mean-spirited things uh, on the other side. Uh, that absolutely doesn't happen here, and I think it's partly because uh, who we are as people, but mostly because the Portlanders expect that of the people they elect, not just on the city council, but from the county commission and from the state legislature. And thus you will find, I think, uh, more so than in most um, locales, a city council that is sympathetic with the fight uh, of others. And um, I would also be remiss in, pointing, in, in not pointing out, uh, although it's been alluded to a couple of times, the other um, time that the city council did not follow the recommendation um, of the Labor Management Benefits Committee. Uh, and that was back in 2005. And I actually brought forward the ordinance that was, um, that overrode their recommendation. Um, the Portland Police Association, which is not uh, Commander Benson's uh, association, the command association, the Portland Police Association represents police officers, sergeants, detectives, criminologists, anybody other than who Dave Benson does not represent, um, were in contract negotiations. Their contract expired and they were trying to get a different health benefit plan. Um, the uh, money needed to fund their health benefits was to come from the reserve fund on controlled by the Labor Management Benefits Center. They voted not to allow the Portland Police Association to have access to their for their premiums uh, as of uh, July 1st, 2005. They're thus leaving police officers in Portland without the whole coverage. Um, I was lobbied heavily by all the unions in the city to agree with the position of the Labor Management Benefits Committee. But then, like now, it wasn't the right thing to do. At the end of the day, when people present me with facts and figures, it doesn't override what my Part tells me it is the right thing to do, and I could not have the conscience to allow the city's police officers to go without health coverage. And I don't feel any different about this issue today. Bye. Well, thank you all for being here today. Um, but uh, the record that both chambers are standing room only, and it's really great that you took the time uh, out of your busy schedules to come here on a Wednesday morning in support of this. Uh, thank you also for normal testifying. <laughs> <laughs> I think we did have a very good representation. And thank you for the GM proceeding for your leadership on the Basic Rights Oregon. And, and yeah, lots of great events there. We certainly appreciate all of your work. And I, in particular, am uh, guided by your leadership. And I appreciate the way, the way you do things as well as what you do. Um, it's important to note this ordinance also expands coverage for uh, the kinds of mental health providers in, for all situations, not only for transgender care. And, and that's a benefit which is cost neutral, so it has received less attention. However, two other benefits were considered by the Labor Management Benefit Committee and rejected as too expensive. One was for temporomandibular joint disorders, and one was for orthotics. And um, those were even more, they, those were much more expensive than what uh, we're approving here today. So the Labor Management Benefit Committee is there, is, I agree with Command Benson that it's an amazing committee where people are so diligent about looking at costs and benefits. Um, so the cost of this is $32,000. And what was mentioned in testimony is that the suicide rate for transgender people is 33%. It seems to me that $32,000 is pretty uh, cost efficient saving a life. And more than that, it's the right thing to do. And 
I appreciate living in a city and serving on a city council where we look at what is the right thing to do. I thank Mayor Adams for your leadership on this. You're doing this because it's the right thing. It may not be politically popular, but it's absolutely what we need to do today. Bye. Well, I want to thank uh, Clay Neal, uh, uh, Jennifer Yocum, and uh, Warren Jimenez, uh, Amy Rees, and Karen Brooks on my staff who have all worked on uh, this issue over the past uh, two and a half years. Again, to our community partner, Basic Rights Oregon, to the uh, trans community of Portland, who uh, each and every day make this city a better place. And it's uh, really my honor and privilege to serve on the city council we can bring an ounce of fairness uh, in return. Um, when I put down this gavel, you can clap and share. <laughs>